Hey everyone, back for a new video. Rocking all the Colorado swag. Got my shirt. Got a little bit of Colorado. Oh gosh, shit. Coffee. There it is. <laughs> and, uh, ready to rock. So, cheers. So, today's video, uh, what I want to cover is how I go about uh, choosing and investing in initial public offerings. Um, I personally have had the best success of any sort of investments I've ever done with public offerings because they just give you the best, uh, in my opinion, um, best access to information. So you actually have like the full information, or at least access to the full information for what this company is, how to value it, I suppose, and is it a good investment? Is it a good? Is it going to have good return? So. The short short way of what I do to invest in these companies is kind of just pretend I'm on Shark Tank. And then I read what's known as a registration statement. Now, every initial public offering has to have a registration statement uh, submitted to the SEC. Um, so you can actually go and read that. And in this registration statement covers things like their capitalization, so like how much money they've been making, are they growing, uh, how much debt they have, the payments on those debt, how much interest... Um, and in my opinion, most importantly, what are they going to use the initial public offering money for? So the way initial public offerings work, it's a way to ta to uh, grab public money. So people like you and me can give money to a company for an investment. That's the only time an actual company gets money from public uh, investors like ourselves. When we buy a stock, usually the company never sees that money. The only time they see it is when they do an offering, an initial public offering or a secondary offering, and they actually sell shares from themselves to the public, and then the public pays them money, and they take that money in for an investment to typically do something with. Now, some companies do these public offerings for a good reason. They either pay off debt, or they buy machinery, or they invest in marketing, uh, new patents, stuff like that. And there's a lot of companies that just do it to create a public market. They have no plans for the money. They just kind of let it sit in the bank account or some treasury notes, gain some interest, and stay safe until they need it for an acquisition or some other investment. But for the most part, it's just there to sit there and people investing in those companies, those IPOs, for technically no reason. Just for them to continue doing the exact same thing they're doing as it is um, with the stock symbol. So I aim for companies that are tag it getting the public uh public markets to invest in something to actually change their business and improve their business those companies have done really well with explosive growth and i would see typically 100 percent returns or more in a couple months to maybe six months i take off half of my position at that point it's risk-free and uh i just hold the rest for you know, until it becomes a bad company or until never <laughs> i just keep holding it um, since at that point it's a risk-free position, I can just kind of hold it and let it sit in my portfolio and just grow, which is great. Um, and plus, I'll be in at the beginning and at the you know the bottom level, uh, which is basically the best spot you can get in for any any company, any public company. It's at the start. Right, so let's get on to the uh, the internet here, and I'll show you how I find this information. Um, before we get into that, though, I do want to kind of plug in this app. Uh, I don't use it for trading, but I do use it for research, especially for uh, these IPOs. It is called Webull. It is a free stock trading app. You don't have to pay uh, commissions on your stock trades or your options. Um, but I mean, it's a double-edged sword there, but I won't get to that. That's maybe another video. The cool thing about them, though, you can hit this button market and explorer, and it shows you all the IPOs that are coming out in the next week or two. And it also gives you a link to their prospectus, which shows you all their information, the uh, how much debt they have, how much money they're making, the use of proceeds, all that stuff. Um, and that's, that's the registration statement. That prospectus and registration statement are the same thing. So I'm going to go on to the internet here and pull up a registration statement. So let me go to Edgar... Here we are. So first, I'm going to pull up Airbnb. This was an IPO a couple weeks ago, um, and their registration statement basically said that they weren't uh, going to use this money for anything 
in particular. It's a general form of registration. See, this is a this is it. Let's look for this S1. Typically, it's at the top of the page, the one the document you want. If it isn't long as hell and looks really boring, then you're on the wrong document because this is long as hell and looks really boring. So we're going to go down to the table of contents, and these are always linked. So you want to look for the use of proceeds, and in this, there's a lot of jargon here, but the main part you're going to look for is kind of these two paragraphs. So the principal purpose of this offering are to increase our capitalization and financial flexibility and to create a public market for a common stock. Essentially, the purpose of this offering is to take public's money and put it into our bank account to just gain some interest. That's kind of what that says. And then this part, currently intend to use these proceeds to, for general corporate purposes, working capital, operating expenses, expenditures, also uh, for investments in business, products, offerings, technology, although we do not have any agreements, commitments, that's time. So now they can use that money sitting in the bank account and just wait and do one of these things later. But I mean, there's no plans for any acquisitions, no plans for investments. It's just give us your money so we can put it into our bank account, <laughs> which isn't the investment I would want. You know, like I said, I kind of act like I'm on Shark Tank. Um, so if someone came into this Shark Tank and I was the investor and they were asking for a bunch of cash from me to have it sit in their bank account, I'll tell them to go screw themselves. I'll put it in my bank account. Let's sit there. Or I'll go invest it in other companies that make money and are using that money for investments to create return. Now, on the other side, if I was on Shark Tank and someone was asking me for an investment to fulfill a purchase order, so I mean they already have the sale over there. They just need money to fulfill the sale or maybe make machinery to increase their production and they have the production ready to sell. I mean, they just, they just need the money to do something with it to increase their revenues. That's a good investment. You can see clearly where the return is going to come from. So I look for that. And we actually have a stock coming out a little later today called Driven Brands that I'm going to probably get involved with as long as it starts trading uh, favorably. I mean, there's a lot of public interest in it, which you can easily tell um, if it's starting to trade and it's up like 50, 60, 80 percent, there's public interest. <laughs> So let's check out this one. Uh, it's called Driven Brands, D-R-V-N. And registration statement is here, I believe. That doesn't look right. Deal form registration and this one here, okay. So there's our registration. And use of proceeds. Okay, so this is just boilerplate stuff. We're looking here. So we expect to use this, the net proceeds, uh, to repay in full $722 million of indebtedness under the senior credit facilities. Awesome. So they want to pay off $722 million of debt, uh, in, which instantly increases their um, you know, viability as a business, instantly increases their you know, uh, stability. So it leads to higher prices, higher stock prices. Uh, the next thing I would look at, though, is since they're dealing with debt, I want to go look into what that debt they're repaying is. Um, and actually, they have that in this. Yeah, they actually referenced the section, so description of material indebtedness. So let's go back to the table of contents and pull that up. I saw that it was down here. Here we go. Car wash senior credit facilities and the interest rate is down here. Um, overall, I already read this, so overall it kind of says the interest rate for these loans are about 3.5 to 6.5. Let's just call it 5% in the middle. Uh, so they'll be saving 5% on $722 million um, right off the bat once they do this offering. Which, I mean, it's a good chunk of change. It's definitely something that makes your business better, leads to higher stock prices. And on top of that, uh, the next thing I look at is their, um, you know, growth. So are they growing? And I saw that here. Nope, not that one. A little higher. Yes. Yeah, so here's some of their growth from 2010, 2019. Average is four percent a year, and it's pretty consistent. So I mean, they are growing. That's good. Store accounts going up. 
revenue going up, uh, system sales going up. So everything looks good. Company is growing. Company is using this investment to pay off debt, which is a good thing to use money for. It's not just going to sit in a bank account making half a percent at best. Instead, it's going to save them 5%. Um, and yeah, it's growing. Company looks good. And uh, there's an actual reason to have this investment. It's This is the type of IPOs you want to be looking for. So when this comes out, I'll probably make another little quick screen recording just you know, buying the stock. I'll show you how that it is. Uh, way above the price, the initial public offering price, um, which shows there's good demand. Now, before I do that, let me just go into like two other things. Uh, these are kind of like advanced, but you can buy these at the IPO price. So when this starts actually selling on the public markets, it's probably going to be like forty dollars, roughly, usually, maybe thirty. But if you buy this from the IPO, you can get it for about seventeen, twenty dollars per share. They're actually pricing it at $22, uh, which is recent news from today. You just have to have an account, an investment account, with one of these underwriters, they're called. So, I mean, something like J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley. You can make an investment account with any of these people. It's not necessarily that hard. Um, and then sign up for that IPO. The thing is, when you do that, you do have this call, thing called a lockup period. So you won't be able to sell these shares until sometimes it's three months, four months, more. Uh, it changes uh, from stock to stock. But it's there is a bit of a risk. However, like I said, most IPOs get this big bump up once they get to the public market. Uh, so if you found a good IPO, it actually might be worth getting in at this really low price of $17, $20 when the first price that you'll be able to get in at, on the stock market is going to be like $35, $40. It's not bad, not a bad deal. That you just have to hold it for, what, three, six months while it continues going up even higher typically. Not a bad deal. So, uh, we'll go into the video with the actual stock trade once it starts trading. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. So, here we are. Um, Driven has been trading since about 11.58. In the afternoon, so uh, looking at 15 minutes roughly. Cool. Anyway, uh, as we can see from up here, it is up 29% from the $22 mark where it started. So, nice little bump up. Uh, I do typically like to see over 50%, but not bad at least. Uh, then we had a nice big old rise up, bunch of people getting in at the beginning. A little shot down at least it is at a higher level than the start it's a good sign and now we're going back up for a little bit getting some resistance we'll see what happens um i'm not crazy about how this has been moving the first 15 20 minutes it's still really early um but honestly i kind of just decided to go for it anyway and just you know buy and hold and see what happens so I actually already put it in the position. I actually bought it when I first started trading around here. Um, what was happening was there was some resistance at this level at 28.50. Then it broke right through and started going uh, higher pretty fast. I kind of just figured it'd keep going from there and it'd be a good IPO. So I bought it in right here at 12.02, maybe 12.03 I got the orders in. Um, and then it decided to go down. So that kind of sucks, but whatever. I'm in there, I got about 2% of my account into this IPO, and you know, we're going from there. So, uh, I got in roughly at $29, a little under it, a few cents. So I'm going to use to set some alerts for um, $60, it'll actually be like $59.98 I think. This way that's at 100%, I can take half of my position off, and at that point it's a risk-free position. If it goes to zero, I wouldn't have lost a dime. And if it does keep going up and it goes to hundreds, thousands of dollars, well, I did pretty damn good for not taking any risk besides the first six months. So we'll see where this goes. Um, I always post these types of things on my Facebook and Instagram stories. And uh, so when it hits 100%, I'll let everyone know. And I'm also going to put it up in a little bit um, as the most recent new IPO play. So here we are. 
Um, anyway, I hope you got something out of this video, especially those registration statements. They they shed so much light on this whole initial public offering, uh, you know, thing. Um, a lot of investors love initial public offerings. They're they're good. I mean, they they move really fast. So you can see this has already gone from twenty seven up to twenty nine. So well, it almost did ten percent in just these five minutes, six minutes. When it goes up, it goes up fast and strongly, which is what you want to see out of an investment. Of course, when it goes down, it can do the same thing. Um, but, you know, you do try to do your best to get uh, stocks to go up, not the ones to go down. All right, well, I will leave you with that. If you did get something out of this video, uh, maybe leave that in the comments. Let me know um, or if you have some ideas, other topics you want to know about, um, definitions or something. Just give me ideas for new videos to do. Always nice. Because, you know, I don't necessarily do these for me. Um, you know, I want to get something out there for, for you. You know, add value to your trading and make you more comfortable in the market so you can take a little more risk maybe and size up and actually make some good gains. So, yeah, leave me some comments. Uh, like the video if you like the video. Um, share with a friend if you think they're into stocks or whatever. Cool. Talk to you all soon. Happy trading. And good luck out there.